Hello, guys. Welcome to Dreams Journal Podcast, Episode 2. So I just want to say thank you so much for all the support on our first episode. We appreciate all of the um, love that we got, all of the likes and comments that we got. And also shout out to the one person who, who subscribed to our podcast as well. Thank you so much for that. Um, on on my panel today, we have McCallumist. Hey. We have Mr. Wushi. Hello. And we have our newest member, SS Josh 24 Hiya. So they are also so thankful for all of the support that y'all have given us. And now we're going to move into what we have been playing for the week. For me personally, I've been playing this game called The White Room. It's like a puzzle adventure game where you have to go through six rooms and you have to figure out the puzzles. And it's sort of like a escape room in a way, but it's very challenging. And I'm currently stuck on room three. So if you actually have beat that game, please let me know how to beat it because I am so lost and I'm ready to beat that game because I'm actually into it a lot. So, um, McCallumus, what have you been playing, bud? Uh, so, you know, it's actually, I've been bogged down in this huge project and it's kind of tough to play stuff. And honestly, this podcast has helped a lot in terms of like making sure I actually go play a few things every week because there's so much amazing stuff out there and I feel like the quality has just, just gone up exponentially as of late. Who knows why that is? Uh, but one dream that caught my eye. Uh, was The Trip uh, by Cat135. And I don't know if you're into the psychedelic scene in Dreams, but I feel like there's a fair amount of really trippy stuff in in Dreams, just because it's so easy to make crazy stuff with the Kaleidoscope tool. Um, but you really have to play this dream. I honestly thought I was getting acid flashbacks toward the end. It's just incredibly well made. Um, and the other dream I wanted to shout out, which is fantastic. I'm definitely a, a combat connoisseur in dreams, which I think is really hard to pull off, like super solid combat. And that game is by this Japanese dreamer, and it's called Aka Oni by Toto Toto Idopa. Who knows if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's insane. He basically made Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice in Dreams. He just replicated all of those mechanics and made it like this kind of cute little anime style. And it's amazing. It's probably the most solid combat I've ever played in Dreams. And it's it's amazing. You gotta go play it. I've actually played that as well, and it's a lot of fun. Um, I think it features like six rounds or something like that, or something like that. But it's a lot of fun. Um, how about you, Mr. Wishy? What, what, what have you been playing, bud? Uh, so similarly, I haven't really had too much time to play stuff because I've just been helping making all kinds of stuff. But actually, I fell down a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, and the specific creator, uh, Dino Burgers, I believe. So what he's done is he makes like he's made a bunch of like Lego characters. That's something like I grew up playing, like the Lego Star Wars, all those type of things. So it's really cool to see like somebody be able to capture that in dreams. You know, it's like a really I don't know, it's just interesting to see. I always love to look at character stuff, so that's something that really stood out to me. Nice. Um, Josh, I know that you don't have dreams, but what have you been playing this week um, in gaming in general? Well, I haven't had as much time for gaming as I'd like to have, but of course, and I know it's kind of cringy, I have to leave a special place in my heart for Minecraft. Just really love that game. <laughs> nice. Um, so, you're probably wondering who Josh is. Well, we have Plenty of questions to ask him to learn more about my man Josh. Um, so, Josh, the first question I'm going to ask you is just a very general question. That is, tell us who you are. All right, starting off strong. Well, let's see. I would say probably if I had to describe myself, I would say that I'm a very musical person and I'm very passionate about what I do. Whenever I really get my mind on something, I really like to go at it until I can get it just how I want it to be. You know, I guess. I wouldn't, would say I'm a perfectionist, but I really like to go for something hard. Yeah. Um, what are you most excited about for this podcast? For this podcast, I was thinking maybe that this could bring some sort of like a central source of information, which is obviously a pretty obvious one, but also possibly create a community, not only with us, but also with the Dreams community in general, as they would like, get like a little community. Yeah. Um, what are you looking most forward to when you get dreams on day one? I have to play the campaign, obviously. It looks amazing through the trailers. 
Yeah. Um, what are your goals for this podcast? My goals, probably honestly, just contribute as much to the community as I possibly can. You know, I really have a special place in my heart for this game ever since I've been playing Little Big Planet from the age of 12. And I just really want to see Dreams become even more than Little, Little Big Planet ever was. Yeah. Um, what has been your most favorite grant or favorite game um, of all time to you? Um, like any game in general? Yeah. Any game in general. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I got to say probably Little Big Planet. That's kind of where it all started for me in terms of gaming. It's nice. a very foundational part of my childhood. Nice. Um, do you have any more questions for him? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, how did you hear about Dreams? Well, um, watching Little Big Planet YouTube videos, recently I fell down a rabbit hole of them for some reason, mainly just wondering why Little, Little Big Planet 3 was so bad. And I heard about Dreams, and then I started looking into it, and I was like, holy crap, this game looks amazing. And now I'm here. <laughs> nice. nice. I think it's going to be super interesting to have someone on the pod who is like kind of going through the motions we all went through during the beta. Yeah. It'll be a super interesting perspective. Yeah. I'll definitely have a fresh set of eyes. So I can probably see it from a different perspective than you guys would. Oh, yeah. Um, what, are you, what do you want to like make first in Dreams? Um, I know that you said you had a lot of ideas. I um, think probably one of the main things I'd like to make to work up to is like an arcade, just like a normal arcade, like where you can like win points and stuff. Be cool for multiplayer too. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be really people. Fun. Just like something like a game lobby, essentially. Cause Maybe some bowling in there. I don't know. I will say that um, scoring or scoring um, competition in dreams is very, very strong and people love, love to compete and get the highest score. For example, last week we had a whole entire debate about cow runner and like how like um, this, this one dude got to 51,000 points um, or like 51,000. Um, what's the word? Laps. That's, that's laps. it. Yeah. Laps. Yeah. Around uh, cow runner. Speaking of which, oh ha- Mr. Wushi, did you ever beat um, his high score? No, but I am going up. I went from number six to number five. Each week, I'm planning to go up one <laughs> spot. Your he is four weeks, you'll be number one. There can be only yeah, one, and I will um, improve. Do you have any more questions for Josh? I, I do, actually. So okay. you said that you make music, or you at least I, like to make music. I do, yes. Uh, I guess what genre of music do you prefer to work with? Um, I would probably say more of like I not necessarily like pop, but more of like a modern, a more contemporary form of music. That's probably a better answer. So I can't expect any Beethoven from you. <laughs> I mean, I'm a classical pianist, so maybe. <laughs> Ooh, impressive! I don't know. Nice. So I had kind of some like general tips for people who are like just getting into dreams. Like, you know, it's kind of intimidating when you click on game i'm gonna make a game and that blank white slate comes up um yeah so the first my first tip is watch the media molecule streams every tuesday they're just incredible hints in every single one of them that you, you can't really find elsewhere it's just super hard to like come across those things mm-hmm. and you know all those people know the game so intimately you should definitely watch the streams and watch the past streams as well. Um, the next one is be active in the community, of course, and ask for help. Everyone is super, super helpful and it's just such a wholesome place to be. So yeah, definitely don't be afraid to, uh, to ask for help whenever you need it. And the next one is kind of controversial. Some, a lot of people have disagreed with me on this. And I think that, if you have that one big idea that you want to make, you should make it first. And many people have said, don't do that, start small, but I totally disagree. I did that first. I made it like this giant game that was probably a bit too much to handle, but in the end, it like taught me a little bit about how to do everything in dreams. And I sort of became like a jack of all trades because I like learned a little bit of music creation, a little bit of animation, a little bit of world building. I thought that was like super helpful. But feel free to disagree if any of you. I mean, I, I was one of the people that did disagree with you, but 
What I would say though is that it definitely depends on the person. So for you, like that probably is the best way for you to do that. But that doesn't mean that'll work for everybody. Just like not everybody can start with something small. Yeah, definitely. You know? I mean, like for me, for me, my like first big game that I learned a lot from was I try to remake um, the Impossible Quiz. That took me about three weeks to make, and like I learned so much logic by like just making that in general. Um, and then like from that, I used all my skills that I used to like make two more games based off that. So I think a good like starting thing to like or like, I think a good starting game to do is try to re- remake something just because okay. you have something to base your idea off of. That I don't know. Your, like, I don't want to say too much about it, but mm, I mean that could be tricky. Yeah, yeah, that's tricky. I don't want to. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think I think it's like a good starting point just just to get your like controls down and just to like learn all like the logic and like. And just try to recreate something, and then you can use that knowledge into a, a original idea or something. I, I can give some personal advice about this one. Uh, I think if you do decide that you're going to remake something to learn how things work and whatnot, maybe don't upload it. Because believe me when I say that it could easily go wrong very quickly. Yeah. And I, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm sure some people <laughs> know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a me. Oh, Jesus, don't do this to me. <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> Oh, no. Um. So now we're gonna talk about um a very very special topic, probably on everybody's minds who loves streams. And we're gonna talk about this this little game called Little Big Planet. Um, it came out back in two thousand five. Two thousand eight. Eight. Sorry, two thousand eight. Yeah. October twenty first. Um, yes. Um, and it has had three uh, or two sequels: Little Big Planet two and three. Three was not made by by Mini Molecule, but it still is Little Big Planet. Not really, but um, Sumo Digital murdered it. Yeah, uh, but we're gonna talk two about, spinoffs as well. Yeah, two. It made yeah. PS PlayStation Vita and Little PSP Big carding. Carding, yeah, and carding. There were three yeah. events, actually. Oh wait, yeah. there's another one. Um, but it's oh PSP it has, right, like, right. It That's has a such a long history. Um and we and we want to talk about everything in 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 this because like it is definitely its predecessor to dreams and like what it has done to come up to dreams I guess in a way so we're gonna talk about everything inside Little Big Planet um and the and the evolution of that and now um, how it has become dreams so. Basically, this is going to be a up and floor of discussion. So let's just hit it. Alrighty, where to begin? Yeah, I know, right? Um, I suppose a little big planet. The the first one it laid out so much that was so new, especially for people who like had just on the PS3 because it was the first kind of game in its class. Like there was no other game that like you could just do whatever you want and like hang out with friends at the same time. Granted, there were still limitations, but basically your imagination was your limit. Yeah, totally agree. Um. I still remember back in the day when I first got Little Big Planet. That was my first mini molecule game, and I was like, "What is this game?" And I remember playing my very, very first game that I played inside Little Big Planet was a game called Bomb Survival, and we all know oh yes, games. the yes. greatest games ever made. Uh, ev- yes, there's so many in Little in Little Big Planet that it's just filled with them, um, but there's just something jolly about it that you just play it and you just try to survive as long as possible on like a like a long platformer and you have like bombs coming down and like and like destroying all like the platformer underneath underneath you it's just so many good memories um yeah Mm -hmm. and then there's anyone that played little big planet for sure played one of those levels oh yeah at least like 10 of them so many of them that they were everywhere Shark survivals, all these things. Zombies, yeah. Mortal Kombat, everything was there. In my opinion, the community of Little Big Planet, both 1 and 2, was both its biggest feature and also its biggest downfall. Because the multiplayer in that game was like phenomenal. You could just hang out, it'd be like you're actually there with them. There were plenty of great levels of play. However, the lack of moderation really led to just all those crappy levels just being everywhere. And I mean everywhere. And like, you just could not escape them. Like, Every day on like the top new levels page, there would always just be another one of those levels. 
or if you like random play levels like that you get like at least two of them in a session wait so you're saying you didn't like my bomb survivals but mine's <laughs> no. had angry birds in it <laughs> that makes it worse <laughs> oh you have to give me hearts for it and i'll give you a heart back Oh, oh, we need to bring man. we need we need that back in dreams heart for heart it's the greatest thing heart for heart uh-huh. yeah <laughs> is it hard in it... dreams i don't even know uh, oh, it's, gosh, no it's thumb in dreams for so many so many months is it harsh or, or is it likes well likes but it's just a little thumbs up that's right yeah it'll come soon thumb for thumb oh, that doesn't sound as nice thumb for yeah. thumb heart for heart is better so I will say, Josh, that uh, the modernization inside Dreams is not as improved. <laughs> um, I think for every single 20 levels, there's like one good level. The rest are mm-hmm. just like blank spaces. And then there's like a puppet there doing something stupid. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the good ones are absolutely incredible. And then you have like, something yeah. important to note, though, that you didn't yeah. say. Is that, that that's if you just go through like the general search yeah but like what mm did here is they have like you know the mm picks so they make sure to pick like the best of the best stuff definitely yes but you don't have yeah, to sort definitely going out of their way for curations it's been awesome and i mean they they had that back in little bit planet as well where they had um what's it called like stickered content or what was it called i don't remember it was like the meeting molecules like weekly yeah or something like that um they give them like a little ribbon i'm trying to think it was there was a game back in little bit little big planet 2 and it was like a board game and it was like a arcade type party plat or like party game it was the most fun game like i've ever played inside those kind of games and you had like this board game like type thing um and you and you roll dice, and you would like like a um, move move forward, obviously, and you would and you would play mini games with with your friends online. It was a genius idea, and I'm waiting for that to happen inside Dreams. I mean, there is sort of like that with like Game Factory, if you, you've ever played that. But I mean, it's not technically that, as it's not like a board game. But it was so much fun. I don't know if you ever played that or not, but it was a blast. I don't know what it was called, but. Um, that was in the second one, though, right? Yeah, second little planet. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, in the first um, one, what would you guys do? Like, what was like the main thing that you guys enjoyed doing? I mean, because for me, like, and I think this kind of says a lot about what I do now. In that, like, what my favorite thing was like to just customize Sackboy and just put costumes and put stickers to make all kinds of characters. Never, yeah. Oh, I like always put glasses on on my Sackboy. Like that was that was the. That was my thing. Like I love putting glasses on my little, on my little guy, and then putting a little mustache on him. Oh, uh, I was so cool. I would just mainly play for the community. Honestly, I just really like playing with other people in the multiplayer. Setting. Yeah, and there are like many iconic levels, like in Little Planet. One. Like there's the Titanic level. That one. Was yes. Really hard. There was the Apollo space mission one. Those two were really great. It really pushed the limits of what you could do in that game. And Definitely. Um, I played that Titanic one. That one was insane. Like that was like a full yeah. blown game almost. Like I think it was like twenty five minutes long, something like that. Um, yeah, it was. And then I remember playing um like GTA type games where you would um buy cars, you would like buy houses. <laughs> it was so cool. Oh yeah, didn't someone make a first person shooter in Dream or a little bit Planet? Yeah. Is that in the first one that they did that? Probably. Uh, I don't know. It's been so long that they kind of like, at least the first two kind of blur together to me. Yeah. By the way, I think something that I think, both of the online services. Are shut I think down, something that so we didn't they're mention, pretty though, long dead games. Or like the most amazing things of Little Big Planet though was the story mode. Yeah. Oh yes, this, especially the second one. They had a phenomenal story. Wasn't it the thing? first one? There was something charming about it. Yeah, the first one has its charm, but the second one. It has a much more well-written story than the first one did, I think. It was, like, at least, like, even though it was obviously fake, it was, like, a little bit more, like, immersive. Wasn't um, Stephen Fry the narrator in both of them, or no? I believe so, yeah. yeah. So good. But the stories themselves were never actually narrated. He was what, if, um, what, what if he's in Dreams? That'd Might be, be for all we know. I... I'd That'd be crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, I think 
there's like a lot to say about Little Big Planet, like the story, because like I mean, I'm sure you some of you guys have seen this by now. They uh, there was a there's a remake of the Garden Level in Dreams, and playing through that yeah, is like that's, that's how it I is like the most it. heartwarming thing to play because there's just so much nostalgia just playing through that. I know. Yeah, to bring a tear to your eye. But don't be mistaken, Lil Duplin is not dead because Sumo Digital is clearly intending on making a fourth. Really? One. Really? Yeah, huh. I forgot what the video was. I probably have to find it for a source. But some person, which it sounds really incredible, and it probably isn't. So it's just just take it as he said, she said. But emails Sumo Digital about it and like, are you going to release another one? And they were like, well, you just have to wait and see. I mean, I would be excited about that if it if you know Dreams wasn't already a thing. Yeah, and if it wasn't under Suma Digital, because I don't trust them to make a good game. Ooh, that's harsh. Hate this. They have good games under their belts. But they destroyed the Little Big Planet. I mean, there was only one one game that I played that was actually like mind blowing in Little Big Planet Three, and that was this like open world, like, um, action adventure game. I don't know what it was called, mm -hmm. but you basically went around and you went to like different, um areas and you like shot like these like blobs and you got like rewards and you could like upgrade your weapons it was a full-fledged game like it was insane um i yeah. don't know what it was called but um i was impressed to say at least i mean there was some fun stuff i just wish yeah i just really wish little big plant 3 wasn't the fallout 76 a little big plant franchise i mean it was that's strong it was super rushed. Yeah, it was a very ru <laughs> the only reason I say that is because the similar they share is they're both very rushed games. Like they were both not ready to come out when they did. Yeah. And they shouldn't have. They, they should have waited longer. But just the source of money like made them want to rush the game. And that's why I'm so glad that like Mini Molecule is taking their time with Dreams. Yeah. yeah no. No Crunch it's Studio. Like, what, two years past its original release date. Um. I think two years. Yeah, I mean they've been they've been working on this game now for eight years, seven years. Yeah. Very long time. Very long time indeed. Wait, I know. I rather have a delay. I know game. Josh mentioned how he found out about Dreams. Like, have we ever said how we found out about it? I don't think so. No. Um, I'm actually very curious about. I that. guess because I, I didn't guess hear about I'll it. I'll start. <laughs> um, so I. I've always loved Mini Molecule, um, and I actually saw um, back when they revealed the PlayStation. Um, I think it was Alex and John. I think maybe I don't know. But anyways, they they were doing like these like puppet things, and I was like, "What is this game?" Um, and then eventually, like I started following Mini Molecule, and then they they released concept art. Like I think back in 2014, I was like. This looks so cool, and I was so excited because like there was like rumors about them showing dreams at the E3 20, 20, 20, 2016. Yeah, um, and when when I saw that trailer, I fell in love with the game. Like I like I followed everything dreams. I followed so many YouTubers. I like like them. I tried to find every single last information about dreams during the next like five months that I was just. Full fledged. Let's get it. I want to play Dreams day one. Like, like, how do I play this? And I've been following it ever since. I've watched every single video on Dreams from like every single E three, um, E three playthrough, uh, E three live stream, Pax West, Pax East. You name it, I probably watched it. Um, regarding Dreams, because I'm just obsessed with this game. I hope it does fantastic. Because, like, I just want it to succeed so bad. And then whenever, and then um, when they did the like reveal for the for the release date of the beta, and then I think it was John was actually had the controller in his hand, and um and he was making like a joke about like the very very like like the very very uh, first, cookie, yeah yeah, lo, yeah. yeah. Um, that was actually a joke towards um, them at the E three because like they would all do the like exact same. Um, showcase where they would say all right and you gotta and you gotta place down this like lava thing because it's dangerous and it would always be like a joke 
it was and a then, very frustrating time. Yeah. And <laughs> um, whenever they did that, and then it, and then when they like, oh, well, you never knew, but like on the other side, it was hiding something secret. And then um, it said release date. Uh, I don't know what date it was, but I think it was like December 5th, something like that. It was that. like 15th or something. So, yeah, but it was just such an incredible reveal. And I, I'm like, it is almost surreal that like Dreams comes out in less than two weeks. And I've been following Long Journey. Yeah. And like, I've been following this project now for almost four years of my life. Like, I've pretty much been through college and, and now I, I get to finally play Dreams. It's, an, it's, it's just, oh, it's just so insane. Like, I don't know how I'm going to handle the release, but I'm just so excited for them to release it. Um, and I don't know. Like, I'm just like, I just love this game in general. So, yeah, that's how I figured out about Dreams. Um, I love it to death. I play it nonstop. Like, I had over 550 hours in Earth. 570 hours in dreams this this, this past year alone so if that, if that tells you anything about me is that i love dreams so i'm gonna stop talking now and let the other two talk so yeah yeah my story is a little bit different uh because truth be told never played any little big planet no never kill me now Fake. i know Fake. i know I it's a serious transmission um but yeah i i, I was getting I just got my PlayStation VR, uh, which was insanely mind blowing. And this article came out, I forget who was by, probably like Push Square or something. And they're like, uh, best games to look forward to PlayStation VR. Um, Dreams just announced VR support. It's like, what's, what's Dreams? What's this? And I uh, looked up a little video. I saw that, yeah, puppeteering video with, uh, I think it was Mark Healy. And John Beach, they were just puppeteering these these weird things around on a stage. I'm like, what are these people watching? Um, and yeah, I was like, what what can you do in this? It's like a game engine kind of thing. And then E3 2018, I guess is the one they had that big presence at with all the lava cookies. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was like hyped enough to actually sign up for Media Molecules newsletter. Like I had never done that before, which seemed crazy to me at the time. But I'm like, I need to know everything about this game, mm-hmm. and I was lucky enough to get in the beta. The rest is history. Oh, which, which when did you get into the beta? What phase were you in? The first one. Oh, nice. Same. I was oh, in the day one. I got the oh, really? I mean, I, I was subscribed to the newsletter and everything, but I didn't get my thing until, like, near the end. Oh, no. That's I'm still crazy. sad about it, even though I've been in early access this whole time. Part yeah. of it still hurts. I got, I got early access literally the, like, second hour it came out. Like, I was, like, I was, like hunting it down. Do you remember people talking second. about how it was going to run out? Yeah, I was scared, <laughs> yo. I was so scared. Was I? I was like, and I was like, I need this now. Yeah. So you immediately have to buy it before it gets sold out on the PlayStation Store. And then I, I mean, and like they never took it down over the, I guess the ten month period, not ten month period. Yeah, ten month period, right? Yeah. Um, I think the final numbers were it sold 140k. Because yeah, you can like look at uh, MM Dream Queen, right, to see how yeah. many people you can unfollow. Them, so. Yeah, sure. it's probably take. yeah, give or take 140k. A little bit more. Probably like a good number yeah. for early I mean, access. That's pretty good. Yeah. For, yeah, I feel like, like it averages like 400 people online at any given second. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I remember how I found out about Dreams, though. Yeah. It was, I, uh, I remember, from, I mean, for me, because I had played Little Big Planet 3, and you know what? I actually liked it. All right. I, I liked it. <laughs> I won't say it was as good as the other two. I'm sorry for you. But it was fun. I liked some of the new gadgets they introduced. It was good. But um, so that was like, I think 2014 is when that came out. So I played that for about a year. And it was a point where I'm like wondering like, hey, I I like this game a lot. There's no sign of a fourth one. Like, what's up with that? So I tried like looking for like anything about that. And eventually that led me to learning about Media Molecule, at which point that was around 2015. 
So at E3, I then saw their reveal trailer for Dreams, which was the uh, the first trailer with uh, Francis, uh, the little panda thing, fighting all the uh, zombies, if you remember that. Yeah. And I mean, from that point, I got hooked on it and just followed it so much. And the fact that I didn't get into the first beta, I'm still salty about it. And I'll never stop being salty about that. <laughs> Sorry. It was a lot of fun. That uh, makes mean, it worse. It was the wild, it was the wild <laughs> west of dreams. Uh, you did not miss <laughs> much at all. Literally, <laughs> um, I think it was like the first 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 few days of dreams. There was there was like one good game in dreams, and that was Slayer this... McKenzie made yeah. this incredible game. Uh, you got a head start. You got a head start. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. <laughs> but um, it's crazy though, like um, how far little big planet has come um and then now it's dreams i mean like literally dreams is like a 3d 3d li- little big planet when you think about it because i see mean, all the influences for sure. yeah um i like to think they're still separate things yeah but, i mean like dreams pays tribute to not them to spoil you too they're much, clearly separate franchises you'll get you some of the tools you'll be very familiar with it's like oh this is exactly like little big planet because yeah. it is yeah it feels like the natural evolution just like they're, they're like the tech is finally here yeah because yeah. like before people would have to like glitch the system to make three stuff and now you can pretty much can make anything and everything um honestly i mean i think it would be crazy to see somebody um make little big planet inside dreams but i think that i mean honestly i think that could happen like I mean, you can really already did. find people. Um, like, like I said earlier, the gardens level is already there. Yeah, somebody, so, somebody remade Super Mario Maker inside um, Little Big Planet. Just Two, a I think. point because everyone's like, yeah. "Isn't Dreams just Mario Maker?" And now, <laughs> better. yeah, nope, because uh, I made it in Dreams. Because I mean, honestly, I can see it happening. Though. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, all the. All the materials are there. I mean, there. I mean, there. There are already so many assets for Little Big, Little Big Planet inside Dreams that somebody who has a lot, a lot of talent could put that together and make. And they have plenty like, of levels. I mean, there's teams dedicated to remaking the game. Like yeah. it, you can look for it on the Dreamiverse. You can already find people that have made a lot of progress and like on getting the assets done already, and they've already made progress on the levels. It's really cool to see. And there's actually a guy or. I think it's I think it's like three guys that are making a a little big planet uh game inside dreams. Um and I mean it looks really good. Like he I mean he just has one level and that's the gardens. Um but even like the loading screens itself looks so pro- professionally made, it's insane. Well that won't get copyrighted. I'll right? play that. <laughs> I mean, it might. Watch Sumo Digital put in their coffee. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, oh. I wonder I wonder why Mini Molecule picked them to make Little Big Planet 3. They picked they, them. I thought Sony did. Yeah, it, it was, was Sony? Sony's oh. choice. Medium. Sony owns the licensing for Little Big Planet. Yeah, Media Molecule were like, uh, we're doing something else amazing. So. Yeah, I don't know. So, do y'all think that there's gonna be a little Big Planet four, or no? Dreams, maybe. Yeah, I'd like to think so, just because that's kind of how these things go. Unnecessary sequels, but I who think would it appeal? It might be. I'll give this one a chance. I think it'll be. Better who would want a little Big Planet four at this point? You're right. That's but actually true. here's what I would want to see. Like me, who want nostalgia. I would want to see MM make some kind of little big planet four within dreams. No, they that, dreams no, that we're talking. So maybe they do like a that DLC that is like a camp, like a little big planet campaign as a DLC would be amazing. It'd be crazy, but I pay for that. I think th- I, they could totally do that. Oh, I know there are I, I mean, some insane. Do that. Anyone, if they can do it. Anyone like it'd be them. There are, in- there are some insane little big planet or not little big planet. Some, some insane platformers in dreams already. I mean, it's definitely possible. I mean, you can make full-blown platformer games inside Dreams. I mean, it's very possible. Um, 
But uh, I'm trying to think of like any other like very 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 memorable um, levels inside Little Blue Planet. <sighs> trying to think. Can y'all think of any that have been like that were like so high up there? And I still think the story mode ones. The bomb level is kind of corrupt. Yeah. In memory. Shark. <laughs> oh, um, Shark Survivals. That's a classics. Classic ones. Um, and then the roller coasters. Did y'all play any, any of those? Yeah. I, I remember when they first added water. That was like a yeah. big thing. Somebody made Bioshock. I think. Did y'all play that? Yeah. Yeah. I. I heard about that one. Never played it's, it. It's like actually really good. Um, and then there was that one guy who like remade Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> what? Yeah, he made the In whole the first entire one? game. I think so. There's no way. It was either that one or the, or the second one. I don't know. I would say maybe the second one because like I know there were a lot more tools. Hold on, like I'm in the first one. Now. In the first one, it was more like your best thing you could make was like platforming stuff. In the second one is when people were able to like go past that and make things that no one could have expected. Like I think the second one is when we saw yeah. the first person. Oh stuff. yeah, it's the second one. I think the second one was a perfect sequel. Yeah. Huh. I I think they didn't. I don't think they didn't need to do anything more. I think that was like it. Yeah, they could have just kept updating it. Yeah, I think they should have just ended there. Honestly, just the second one. So yeah, it was made in Little Big Planet Two. The whole entire game. That's insane, though. Wow. That's crazy. Holy cow. Somebody made... Oh, my gosh. That's... Oh, that's still... Oh, and then, like, I still remember, like, all the debates between, like, Little Little Big Planet versus, like, Project Spark versus um, Super that Mario happened? Maker. Yeah. I and, remember like, when, oh, like, a thing, people compared that to Project Spark. Yeah. Um, I saw the comparisons between like Little Big Planet versus Mario Maker, and like um, which one was better. Um, That's kind of unfair too, just based on time. Yeah, because like Mario Maker was released 2016, 17, 16. It's pretty recent. Yeah. Well, I mean, then also you can't say like it's like oh well, which one's better, Little Big Planet or Dreams? Yeah. Like when one can literally become the other, I think that makes it the better one. Yeah, and then um, I think like the most the most accomplished creator I think inside Little Blue Planet um, was what was his name? God. You're talking about I'm guessing Steve Big Guns. Yeah, him. So I figured it out. So it was um, Steve Steve Big Guns. That dude was absolutely incredible inside Little Little Blue Planet. Um, He's even more incredible in dreams. I know, um, but there were there were so many creators inside Little Big Planet um, that definitely made you spark. I mean, I did not make much inside that game besides like very 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 terrible platformers that I thought were like decent. Like I remember like putting in all these like lights, um, and like I remember putting in like dark dark. Uh, atmosphere and like um just putting random stuff in just because i could but what like people what what people made back in little big planet is just insane i don't know so little little big planet has come so far and um now we're on to dreams and dreams comes out in just less than two weeks it's it's it is honestly so surprising and and so surreal. But I have some good news. I have talked to many creators inside the, the Dreamverse, and they have let me know of what they're working on. I've talked to some of the biggest creators, and they and they gave me insight um, on, on their newest game. So we're going to give you about 15-plus-ish types reveals of these games um, that they have wanted to share with you all. Um, and some of them, or all of them, are very exciting, and I'm so excited to play all of them whenever they whenever they come out. So the first game comes from Benji Dixon, and he made Samurai Slash, the original game, 
Um, and he's going to call it either Samurai Slash 2 or Super Samurai Slash. Um, he plans on making cutscenes for before and after each showdown. The first game had five opponents, but um, he plans to double that for the sequel. He's already created more um, detailed eyes and hats for every single character inside the game. In the first game, everyone had a katana. But this time around, everyone is going to have a unique weapon. He's made fun, um, or he made a fan, a umbrella, nunchucks, and for the nighty, nightly eye from a faraway land, he even made a broadsword. Um, he still has a bunch of things to work on, but he is so excited to work on this project, and he is so excited for y'all to play it. Um, did, did y'all play Samurai Slash? Uh, that was amazing. I love those customizable so eyeballs. I hated how hard it was, but it was an amazing game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then just like a few more things that he says is if you are successful in pressing the right button um, in the cutscene, the enemy will receive a speed reduction when the um, when the when the next um, fight happens. Um, if you fail that, uh, the the um, enemy will receive a speed boost. So. Next time Ooh. around, whenever you play in the sequel, make sure that you get that button right because you, because there will be consequences in the sequel. Um, but I'm so excited to play this because it was a very, very fun game in the original one. Um, and he says that it will release sometime after launch, close to launch. Um, and look out for that because it's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Because um, like the first one was so good. Um, it was actually based off of a game back on the NES or something like that. I don't know. But, um, yeah. The second game is from Beef Daddy 11. This is actually a game called Children of Mew. So, this game is takes um, the story of Genesis in the Bible and he makes it into um, basically like a heritage of like islands so he has like a trailer out um inside dreams and it shows a like island tribe trying to find its way in the world um i don't know what what it's going to be about exactly but um just from like the trailer itself all of the animations are so fluid and um i'm very excited to play that um but beef daddy 11 is very excited for that game to come out he says that's coming out on day one of launch so that's very, very exciting. Um, but yeah, um, Mr. Wushi, who is the third reveal that we have? Well, the third one we have is Digital Thing, who is working on a puzzle platformer. Uh, so they're saying that theirs will be inspired a bit by Fez and Japanese minimalistic arts. Awesome. And based on that, that sounds pretty exciting because I think, as far as I know, I don't think that's an art style we've seen just yet in Dreams. Yeah, I love Digital Thing. His, all this stuff is amazing. Um, I mean, oh, yeah. And then next up, we have our very own member, McCallumus, who's going to reveal something for us. All right. So I've been working on this for, I think I'm, I'm in month five now. So it's called Silver Slumber. It's an isometric game. Um, if you ever played Golden Sun, um, it's kind of like a live action version of that. It's like heavily inspired. Uh, by Golden Sun, which is one of my favorite games on the Game Boy Advanced. So good. And so, yeah, it's a top down isometric camera. And it's like an action adventure game with, I have 11 unique enemy types uh, throughout all the levels so far. Um, it's going to be about an hour to play through, I think, for, for most people. It's really hard to tell just because I've, I've played it so much. Huh. And yeah, it's really exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait for everyone to play it and get get those feedback. And you can actually play that um, demo right inside. Yeah, Jedi. the alpha the alpha's out now. It is like the fully unlocked character, um, but you'll be getting all those moves in the alpha like throughout the game, just to kind of keep the keep the player engaged and uh there's a little story uh you're trying to save the world uh from this silver slumber which is a disease that like turns everyone to silver 
And so the whole world is like shut up in their cities because they don't want to get the plague. And now all these evil monsters have taken over the land and you got to cure the plague. And there's a twist at the end too. <laughs> um, I'm oh, curious, Wishy. Um, have you played it, Wishy? Uh, yeah, just a little bit, uh, you know. A little bit. You know, I might have some inside information on that, you know. <laughs> um, I was going to ask McCalmus, uh, do you have anything else that you're working on besides your project? Um, oh, I actually just released a few like uh, physics simulators. Um, yesterday actually and there it's like this galaxy creation simulator it's basically just fun with the force supplier um, yeah oh I also wanted to shout out um, everyone who's been working on this game with me um, Mr. Wushi actually helped me with the main character which yeah. is fantastic oh. by the way and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Django90, who is my logic wizard, resident logic wizard, who has helped me so much with all the animations. Um, insanely good at logic. He's He's been incredible. I also have um, GamerWay. He has he's made some incredible uh, orchestral music in, in Dreams, and um, I asked him to make an original soundtrack, and he's already made a few tracks for me in there phenomenal and so yeah I, I definitely could not have gotten this far without those people as well as all of uh, the assets i've been using from the community uh like city pinions um sandstone assets are just so professional looking uh they're just incredible and yeah, it like... should be out yeah it should be out in like the first week that dreams is out so yeah, if you have dreams and you're getting dreams day one, make sure to pick up Silver Slumber. Um, it will be free of cost inside dreams. You just press play and you start playing the game. Um, for me personally, I hope you have dreams. Yeah, yeah, I hope you have dreams. Um, for me personally, um, I'm gonna work on the Impossible Quiz Three, which is gonna be a original uh, game in the way that I'm gonna think of a original story for it. I I am actually started back on a original story for the Impossible Quiz, but I want to like restart it and just rethink everything. So my plan is to have um, four chapters that basically follows a guy named Buddy because like I love the name Buddy and like um, Buddy has been through all of my games and sad dreams, and it's basically going to be transported in into four worlds and you're going to answer questions just like the impossible quiz is and you're going to have boss battles you're going to have fun games to play um all different scenarios and different different uis um i have a lot planned for it and release date will probably be nowhere close to now because i haven't even started on it but i have ideas for it as well as the game that i'm working on as well called dreamlight so this game is based off the game BitLife. Um, I pretty much have the the whole entire UI done. It's just a matter of getting the game started. Um, that game will probably come out summertime of this year. Um, it's just going to take a long time to get everything planned out because I have to plan out the whole entire life um, that everybody plays because I mean it's gonna be Brent, I mean it's gonna be Brent, Brent and pass every single time um, that you press age. Essentially, you like you you get like a a um, text prompt about like what like happens in your life, um, and um, every single scenario will probably be like one in one, one in four chances you'll get like let's say you you um turn one years old. You could either go to Florida or you could get like sick. Like it's just a matter of like random choices that like all add up to your life. But that's what I'm working on currently and I'm excited for it. So Mr. Wushi, are you working on anything special? Uh, uh, yeah, actually I'm working on a couple of things. Uh, so this is probably, I think this is the first community gem that I'm going to actually try to be a part of the medieval fantasy one. So I got a fun little game I'm making for that. Uh, I just want it to be a simple little game that's meant for a high score, very fun, repetitive. Hopefully that goes well. Cal Runner? Oh, man. Well, not, not Cal Runner. I, I'm making that clear. I mean, I got inspired 
because I just wanted to make like basically I'm making something that could be a flash game. So that should be fun. Uh, and the other thing is I have a bit of an update uh, for anyone that might have seen way back, like probably around beta, I made this little character called Milo the Monkey. That's a lot of people like that one. And I have been working on that for, since beta, basically. And I finally updated that. I uh, remodeled the entire thing because I wasn't happy with the old model. And slowly I'm going to be adding more and more stuff to it. So if anyone wants to check that out, there's a new version of that available. Uh, and I, and Z, I'm pretty sure we also have some kind of audio recording of somebody. I think so. I think his name is Mr. Casey Jones, I think. Mr. Casey Jones, huh? I know. Oh. Hmm. Hope y'all enjoy this this special announcement from the one and only Mr. Casey Jones. Hello, my name is Mr. Casey Jones, and I'm working on Opposite Day 8. That's it. Bye. Thank Oh, sorry about that. Let me uh, slow it down a little bit. So, my name is Mr. Casey Jones. You can call me Casey. I'm working on Opposite Day 8, and it's going to be a little bit of a wrap-up of the Red Crystal Saga uh, that's been happening since Opposite Day 6, which was, of course, the fifth game in the series. And once that's kind of done, I'm going to... Think of some other directions to go with the games. Obviously, they'll all have the trademark silliness and mazes with stuff on the walls. That's kind of the trademark. And after, and just to see what happens with the story, because I just come up with that kind of midway through and from the top of my head and just kind of massage it a bit in the game. And so I don't know where it will go, but with the end of eight, I'll kind of uh, kind of have a little bit of a reboot, kind of uh, just refresh some things. I'm going to keep the characters the same because I really like these characters. My version of Connie, who's voiced by my friend Sarah, and of course V the Yeti, and my son Mikey, who isn't born yet, but in the future he is a uh, a pretty fun fun kid i like to voice him uh, boy i bet this all sounds pretty confusing to people who've never played the games but more immediately is the opposite day explorers club secret societies accessed within the vip lounge bella iris has been working very hard she's designed each of the four rooms which are based off of the four face buttons on the PlayStation controller. And they're all unique rooms. And there's a bit of a uh, trial code you have to figure out based on hints from Opposite Day 7. And so when those rooms are all finished, people can go to them and see all the fun stuff. And eventually I will try to tie them in to the bigger opposite day games with special codes and things that once you're a member of one club you will have special information in the bigger opposite day games and i don't know i think uh i think that'll be a fun way to go for certain secret information i of course like limiting the player to information and having I mean the whole idea of the Explorers Club is to have these secrets that you have to know how to access them from a previous game of mine it's all confusing thank you for putting up with me um, Nick Calamus, who is our next game that we want to reveal so this one is super exciting I, I love Gentleman Tom's stuff he's quite the creator um, he he says he's working on a first-person crime game, a sort of crime simulator. Um, it doesn't have a name yet, um, but you need to break into uh, these locations, like a store, uh, locate a safe and hack it to open it. And you can also run around and loot any valuables and get them to the getaway van in time. He says there will also be a cleaner mode uh, where you test with cheeking uh, out crime scene uh, to clean any evidence, bag any bodies, um, and 
get out with your life and not getting caught. Sounds super, super <laughs> exciting. He says he has up to 10 to 15 levels planned, which is insanity. Um, it's his biggest project yet. And he's working with the Dream Skilled even um, to uh, ha- get a new asset pack out as well. So he's a busy, busy guy. Um, if you don't know, gentlemen, Tom um, made a day in the life. It was a like a- animation short um, that told a story about a- about d- depression and suicide. Um, it was very, very serious, and it actually got featured on. Uh, Communications, I think two weeks ago. Um, so I'm very excited for this project as well, and I'm sure everybody else is on this podcast and everybody inside Dreams. Um, I don't know if y'all played uh, his like a- original game or like um, played his original animation. If y'all need thoughts on that or not, um, yeah. But it was definitely surreal. And with that being said. Um, our next game that we want to talk about is actually already out in beta, um, and that is Orioto's game. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to let... Uh, Fufule. Fufule, yes. Uh, uh, he's a Parisian, a Frenchman. Yes. So just say it with a French accent. <laughs> Fufule, yeah, Fufule. You got to like, Fufule. Uh, <laughs> but no, um, this game is going to be a day one release. Uh and he plans to make a full-fledged game out of this. Uh, he has the very first five levels in Inside Dreams already as like a beta. Um, and he's having, I think, five worlds, I think, Inside Dreams. Uh, or like inside of his game. Um, and the story is an original story, I'm pretty sure. And it's basically a platformer um where you have to get um a lot of points so it's like a old school type platformer that is very very beautiful to look at because i've seen some of the sceneries 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 um um on his twitter and they're like all so beautiful i don't know if y'all played the original or like if y'all played the demo or not but yeah i did it's awesome i love his art style yeah i feel like he's a professional he is yeah he actually he actually sells art i think um, but that game is going to be amazing, and um, that game comes out day one, uh, for Dream. So, whenever you're playing through Mini Molecules campaign, you'd be like, after after you beat that and you get the ending credits for that, you need to hop on Orioto's new game because it's gonna be amazing. So, our next game is from a actual studio inside Dreams called Arcane Studios. Um, they actually released a trailer for the game, and it's called Project Ikylos. And it follows a main character um, who has to fight demons and creatures. And it's going to be like a looter, I think. Um, and um, it looks very, very polished inside the trailer. I don't know how long it's going to be. I, I don't know the story of it, but from but from the trailer, it looks exciting, and it's coming out day one inside Dreams. Um, did y'all see the trailer at all? I did. Yeah, I think Blue Animate help help is on that team, and he's such an awesome animator. Yeah. So um, I will make sure to link that inside the best inside the description. Um, if you're listening on our website. Um, just look up Project Ecolog Dreams and you'll find it and watch it and be amazed because it is so professionally made and um, I look forward to playing that day one. Um, so our next game that we have is actually from a guy named Disarmed who is not... Never heard of him. Never heard of him, yeah, never heard of him. Uh, he's only like one of the biggest Dreams creators uh, um, and he's working on a game called Guardians who has... who. Or which has a trailer out as well, um, and the concept of this game, I think, is um, you are a guardian who has to go on missions. I think, and you have to. Do y'all know more about this game than I do? I don't know, but like, I think you have to like do missions and you get stuff for that. Think like, think like Destiny in a way. I yeah, think. it did remind me of Destiny, but it's definitely pretty mysterious so far. And for the inside scoop, I was watching one of his uh, streams, and he said that it'd be ready like in the summertime. Uh, but he's definitely not rushing it because 
the dude, everything he makes is perfect. So I know. And I'm excited just because um, from like w- what he has been showing, everything looks so well made. Um, I think that once he like releases this game, it's gonna like change the landscape of dreams. I don't know. Like I feel like it's just gonna be like what what just happened? Like like um, this dude just made this game. Like like um this like challenges triple A games. I don't know, but I'm so excited uh, for this game. Um, and what's our next project, Bushy? Right, and the next thing we have up is from Half Up, who had made the Water Gardens. Uh, so basically, he's he, have, he has a few ideas for his next big project. Uh, he's pretty much looking into either doing a prequel or a sequel to the Water Gardens, but he's still not sure yet where to take it because you know he still needs some time to just work out what's happening in the world before he can really continue with it. Uh, but he does know that in terms of his gameplay, he's going to be experimenting with some bow and arrow teleportation type of stuff. That sounds really exciting. I mean, currently he's looking at setting the whole thing in a desert with uh, some kind of fem- female character that'll follow the same format, which is like opening the portal, uh, kind of like a connected universe of dreams itself. That sounds awesome. I know. I'm so excited. Uh, the Water Gardens is... I'm probably going to say this because like i don't know it is just the like it is just the the most polished game in dreams i think because literally the whole entire game is i don't know it's it's just it's just so good yeah, and i can't flawless. wait for this game it's flawless like and i can't wait to see how it's connected because uh, the portal thing i think i was super open-ended i'm like where's that portal go yeah where's it go i, I don't know what's going on there? Uh, Half up, I cannot wait for your new game, bud. Um, and if you have not played The Water Gardens, please play it and get excited for this. Follow him on Twitter. Follow him on YouTube. I think he has a, yeah, he has a YouTube. It's like Antonio Christi- Christophera. Christophera. I probably butchered your name. But look him up on YouTube. Look him up on Twitter. It He is an amazing creator, and I promise you that his – his next project is going to be amazing because he makes amazing stuff. Um, so, McCalmus, who is our next game that we are want to talk about? Next, we have the Game Factory himself, Dorian, who just releases so much awesome stuff. Um, he, all he says is that it's it's called Dimensions, and that it'll be six worlds interlinked. If you if you so choose. So I can say one one more thing about this game, and that so think about think about the game The Gate. Um, the Gate was actually featured in the Impies, Um and essentially you like walk through a gate and you're transported into a brand new world, and then you walk back out of the gate and then you're transported into like the world that you were already in. That's the and concept. It's seamless too. Yeah. That is that that is the concept of this game. Is he's gonna interconnect six worlds? Um, what's gonna happen? I cannot say, but it's gonna be amazing. And Dorian is a fantastic creator, and he is so excited for y'all to play it that he shared me with so much so much information. And he says that he looks forward to releasing this sometime after launch. Not too far, but like not but like not too close as well um so for our next game we actually have kelby jones's new game so kelby jones um he made uh art therapy right yeah and he's also making a game called the sweetest place in the universe which actually has a announced trailer um which came out last week but he's working on a a um space fiction project called a5 that's all he told me. Um, I, said, I, I don't know if it's going to be like a platformer. Probably not a platformer. Probably like a, like a first-person shooter, like a third-person shooter. But Kelby Jones is an amazing creator, and he looks forward to um, sharing that with y'all. He will, he will actually be um, building that project on stream. So if you, if you follow him on Twitch, um, he streams every single day. So he will be building that um, on stream. So, yeah. Check it out. And it's called A5. And he says that it will be released to be announced. So there's not, there's not much there. 
Um, he says around spring 2020 is what he says. So, uh, Wushy, what's our what's our next big game reveal? So the next one, uh, this is from a creator that most likely every single person listening to this has already heard of, and that is Slurm McKenzie. So what they're doing right now is they're not sure yet about exactly what they're going to finish this game. Like they're still trying to figure out what the title is and exactly when it comes out. But they know for sure that they're going to make a co-op game, which the main focus will be on communication. And overall, they're not thinking of making a long game, but the idea being that it'll take multiple tries to complete it. So one that, again, is meant for repetition. Uh, right now, they already have a golfer man who made some just amazing assets for it. So, I mean, that is also something to definitely look out for once there's more information available about when it comes out. Well, that communication aspect sounds super cool. Um, and he also sent me like a little like asset of like a switch. And the switch looks so good. I know that like, that like sounds so stupid for me to say. A switch looks so good, but the switch looks so good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see the switch. Uh, yeah, um, Slurm um, is a great creator. Uh, he's made probably around like twelve projects and dreams already, I think. Um, and he says that like this like next game is gonna be massive. So. I look forward to that. He says that release date will probably be a few months after launch, so not like anywhere close. But he actually has another game that I cannot say what it is. But but he says that he has he has another game in works that's going to be released at launch. Can't say I cannot say what it is, but look, but also look forward to that as well. I'm excited. I know me too. Because Slurm is a amazing creator. Yeah, he's uh, the best of the best. You know. Uh, McCalmus, what is our next reveal? Uh, next we have Jimmy Jules, one and only. Uh, he's working on a RPG, and he's trying to turn it into this uh, wave mode uh, RPG, which sounds super exciting. And yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of combat. You can just go nuts and get as far as you can while it's just destroying all the enemies in your path. Can't wait for that. So if you don't know what he made, he made Blade Gunner, and he made a lot of like uh, multiplayer games. So he made um, he made a uh, Smash Bros type game, but like with like Dreams characters. He made uh, Connect Four. He made uh, I think Soccer. He made like a like a lot of. Um, fun multiplayer game. So for him to make a RPG is like a different route for him. That's why I'm very, very excited to see where this goes. Um, also, Jimmy Jules actually got hired as a game dev as well. Yeah, congrats. Actually, yeah, fantastic job on that, bud. Um, so yeah, like it just shows that you creating stuff inside Dreams can get you a actual job inside of the gaming community. People are watching. Industry. Yeah. Your in dreams, um, your in dreams profile is your portfolio. But yeah, um, but yeah, I look forward to that. He says that the re- release date will be to be decided. It's nowhere close because he has not worked much on it. But he looks forward to really. Re- uh, he looks forward to releasing that um, in the future after launch. Um, what's, what's, what's our next game that's being revealed? Uh, next game actually comes from uh, Twin Brothers Productions. And essentially, though, this will be uh, a, pretty much a fun game hall type of thing. So there'll be a book laying on a counter table. So you'll be able to choose all these different mini games, like a catch em all kind of game, Claw Machine, Lucky Ball, One Arm Bandit, you know, with more games for them to follow. Uh, right now, they're working on the Bandit one, but, you know, there's, but they will get there. They're just taking their time to make sure it all works out perfectly. I wanted more wingsuit levels, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Twin Brothers has made a lot of games. Um, I was wondering if y'all like played any other games. Of course, right? Uh, the wingsuit one is the one I know best. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then they also made um, Frogger type game. I don't what what's it called? Do you know what it's called? <sighs> Frogger. But uh, yeah, I guess it's Frogger. But um, he made like a Frogger type game. He actually like em- like he actually made a game emulated on like a Game Boy Advance. It was crazy, I know. But 
uh, it's he. They are a fantastic duo team, and um, I cannot even imagine what's going to happen inside this game besides awesomeness. So, if you do not follow them um, on Dreams, I mean, they've made a lot of cool games. Their very very first game was called Stunt Team Racing. I go play that. Uh, was she or McCallum's? I don't recall. It was basically like a uh, a um stupid like car game where you essentially want to like crash into cars and get destroyed. Essentially, <laughs> uh, it's a lot of fun though. Um, and then they made a few more games, but this one sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun just because it's gonna be like arcade type games. Inside dreams, and that's and like and like that's always fun because there's because there's um competition there that can be like um seen, um but yeah, McCallumus, what is the next game that was we revealed? Uh, next we have Gofferman's next game. He has two projects on standby, uh, but his next game is a mountain bike game. Uh, he's already uh, got a lot of the gameplay done for it. He just has to make the track. Um, and we all know how amazing he is at making tracks, so holy hell. Um, the other one is a, <laughs> is a kind of a space game in first person uh, with multiple layers of gameplay, uh, essentially based on piloting and exploration. Um, and he says it's his most ambitious project yet. And that, But that's a long, long-term project, so I guess we'll have to wait for that one. But... I love this uh, exploration tease. I feel like that's still something that we haven't seen a lot of in dreams. Yeah, it's not like, it's not like Fallout almost, you know? Fallout. It's like, because like, isn't no Fallout's not in space? Never mind, I'm stupid. Um, Gofferman made uh, Slide Out thirteen fifty six or Slide Out something like that. Did y'all play that Slide Out? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's so much fun, isn't it? Um, did you play that, Wushy? I did not yet. There's You're a lot that I still have yet to play. Oh, I have a catalog. I'm a busy oh, catalog. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been very Backlog busy. Of dreams. I mean, I, I spend most of my time just creating stuff. Yeah, I know. Um, but no, government makes some insane stuff, and um, I can only imagine what he's going to make with this. Uh, I mean... The like mountain bike game sounds so much fun, and then the obviously like the space game. Uh, I can't even imagine what's going to be. Uh, so so the next game is actually not on the list, but I just thought about it. And John Beach is actually making a game where it's like a like toy toy train game. How would y'all explain that? Have y'all seen what he's re- uh, it's like? Have you ever had those toys when you were kids? It was like these wooden blocks you could like put together to make a track and then you'd have like these cars that would run along the grooves in the track yeah so it, he's basically going for that super nostalgic um childhood game i'm sure a few nuances that'll blow everyone's minds i know because john beach is something else and then our last game actually comes from frostworks um he's done a lot of like helping out in projects but he's looking forward to Really seeing his like own stuff, so he's working on fan art and original dioramas slash audiovisuals in dreams. Um, examples he has is Experiment Thirty One C um, and Morning Catch, which is sort of like Pac Man in a way. Um, he also has a huge lineup of like comic cartoons and horror movies that he wants to recreate inside dreams. He will be releasing several characters starting out. Um, on Dreams release that he's never shown off before. Um, so that's very exciting to say at least. And one of his big projects is actually going to be a action packed exp- exploration project um, that has fluid animations and showcases museums. Um, and um, it shows his current characters and his future creations that he wants to put together into a massive game. Um, and this is his biggest game that he has planned for Dreams. Um, and that's all he could tell me, but he says that he's very excited to release it to the public. Whenever that is, he did not tell me, but he's very excited to showcase his his um, passion project with y'all. I actually have a couple of secret reveals to give you. Oh, you do? 
I do. Hold up. Oh, man. I said Where that was the final one, but I got one more coming. Or at least two oh, more, actually. Two more? Yeah. Hit me, so, hit me with it. Hit me with it. Yeah. Let me give you the first one. So the first one is by Roroni Dan. So uh, that's a dear friend of mine, and some of the, he's made amazing things, amazing assets, uh, two of which is he made Ice Cream World Adventures, and he also made Drop Ball, uh, both of which are really fun Ooh. and really exciting. But his next game goes in a very strange direction that I think is going to be exciting. Basically, he's going to be doing a first-person psychological thriller where you'll be able to explore the halls of an old office at night while the terrors resident in the mind of the protagonist unfold and manifest as hallucinations. In other words, the player will experience the character's mind spiraling into a deep psychosis as they walk through a labyrinth of halls in a living environment where the hallways shift around as you explore. And I've seen bits of this, because I've been helping with some of this, and it is very creepy, and it messes with my mind a lot, and it's going to be amazing. My body is ready. And then, yeah, so that's going to be cool to look forward to. I mean, I want to see a really good horror game in Dreams, like that just really goes all in. So I'm hoping that that's going to be that. And then another one that some of you might have seen some of this stuff before. Uh, this is by Morgan the One as on PSN, aka I am not a number. If you follow stuff on YouTube, and they've been working on this very big project, I recommend that you look at their YouTube channel and just see the progress they have because this stuff is mind blowing. Uh, one of the most recent things they made is they actually made the Toy Workshop. If you played that, so with their next project, uh, they're going for a uh, 1950s slash 1960s retro futuristic FPS which is going to be going for a realistic graphic style with all of the scenery being made in retrospective of the era. Holy like cow. Overall, there's going to be animations and adverts fitting for the 50s commercials with more tropes of like 60s spy shows. And I mean, like I said, if you go onto YouTube and see these things, these things are amazing. I mean, there's an entire title sequence that looks like an actual title sequence you would see inside of this. In its own game, in, even even in a movie, it's just amazing to see these things. And this yeah, it's professional. Level. Big fan of I'm Not a Number. He's so good. Well, those products sound absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, so that last project, I think it's called I Can't See You or something like that. Or what's it called? Seeing you. Seeing you. Yeah. Be seeing um, you. Did yeah. He, did he give a a like release date? Time he period. did not he did not but i can tell you that he is hard working like he is right now as we speak he's working on it so that should That's be crazy. out soon and i'm maybe wrong but he's the one that released like the first person hands yes uh the the realistic hands yeah yeah, that's all. So, I mean, that's that gives you an idea of what to look forward to and like i said if you haven't seen those things on youtube you really need to go look at that yeah, it's it's it is something else. But um, so every single month we're we're gonna do this where we like um, talk about future projects inside dreams um, because I mean there are so many creators um, who want to talk about their creations and they don't know how to really get that information out. So that's why this podcast is here for y'all to talk about it. At the end of this month, we 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 will have another fifteen ish type reveals again for y'all um to learn about projects that are coming up but um yeah i'm very excited for all these projects and i'm and i'm so thankful that they were able to share that with me so now we're going to move into bets so um last week we asked the question how many views will the the um MPs award show get by the time that we press record um on this podcast and the last time we checked what was the final number that y'all saw 7.4 thousand so with that, that, click yeah. on the video 7.7 7. yeah so with that being said um our first winner of of the um bets inside this podcast goes to mr wushi because he hate <laughs> because he guessed six thousand. wow i know i win um, yeah <laughs> Um, so this week's bet um, is how many trailers will there be for Dreams come next podcast? 
for me personally, I'm going to think positive because I won't let it be marketing for dreams. Please, Sony, please, please advertise this game. I'm going to say there's going to be two trailers for dreams this week. Um, I don't know. Have a good feeling about it. We'll see if I'm right or not. But yeah, there will be two trailers this week for dreams. You are wrong because there will be only one. Oh, okay. How about you? How about you, McCallumist? I don't know. I don't want to say zero, but oh man, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? I'm gonna are go with saying, zero. I think zero? I'm gonna make my own trailer. So if that there comes, oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that. Elka Gaming is making a making a trailer. I think, I think. I don't know. Um, um, SS Josh, what is what is your bet uh, for how many trailers will come out next week or come out before next podcast? Well, I was going to say one, but I don't want to copy. So I'm gonna be really optimistic and say oh, three. Oh snap! Yeah. Even though I know that's wrong, you never know. <laughs> hey, listen, they might go on like. Uh, like a marketing rampage, you never know, you know. I don't know, wouldn't that be nice? Hopefully. I really hope so because it needs it. Uh, I saw a tweet on uh PlayStation's Twitter where they were like showcasing early, early spring games in 2020, and they had Neo 2, The Last of Us 2, uh, um, Ghost of, Shish- Ghost of no, Ghost of Shima, and something else, but they. They did not mention Dreams. It's literally coming out in next Friday. Like, come on, PlayStation. It is one of your, it is one of your own studios is, re- is releasing a game. You're not even advertising it. I don't know. Hopefully they advertise it this week. Um, I really, really do think that they're going to release at least one trailer, if not two, or maybe even three. But um, with that being said, guys, um, I hope you all enjoyed uh, this, this week's podcast. Um, my name is Zebra, aka Z, or my actual name is Dylan. Um, Mr. Wushi, what do you got to say to all the audiences for all the goodbyes and, and, and I mean, all that? I have to say that goodbye, and I am Mr. Wushi. <laughs> uh, and uh, I mean, for me, you can also you can find me all over the place. Uh, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, Reddit, PlayStation, all under the exact same name, Mr. Wushi, Mr. Wushi. And yeah. Looking forward to seeing any of you anyway. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I just want to shout out Media Molecule. Thank you so much. You're killing it. Yes. I, I just, they're so wholesome. How are they so wholesome? I don't know. It's like, uh. I don't even know. Alex Evans does not believe in crunch. And God bless him. God bless him for it. <laughs> um, and thank you to the community, of course. Like, this is. This is insanity. How there's so many nice people that love this game. I know. So it's, it's a nice place to be. I will Happy say to be here. that um, even if like Dream sells like 200k copies, I mean, we will not be a like massive community, but like we 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 will be a strong community, you know. And that's what I think Dreams is. It is a very very strong community whether it's big big or small um but yeah ss josh what do you got to say bud um i just want to say thank you guys for letting me join this and i look forward to the future with yeah, you guys and and of course with the dreams community. and i'm so excited to have you on this team um as always guys if you want to be a guest on this show um just um dm me on twitter on youtube um about possibly being a guest and i will set that and i will set that up for you yeah just play nice but um thank y'all so much for watching um this week's podcast uh next week's podcast will be all about dreams release um i'm so excited for the next two podcasts because we're going to be celebrating dreams um in every way possible as uh they are going to look forward to releasing the game in just less than 13 days which is which is which is crazy so just thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, if you enjoyed it, leave a like. Uh, um, show us um, what we are doing wrong in this podcast, w- w- what we are doing right in this podcast. Uh, give us feedback, text, um, 
McCallumus, Josh, um, Mr. Wushi, me, because we love feedback, and that's what makes these these things better. But for now, guys, um, hope you have a great week, a great day, and dream on, y'all. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. See ya.